I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. A few days ago, I built this PC in the Silverstone CETA A1 case. The object of the exercise was to show off a range of EKWB quantum hardware, including the quantum magnitude CPU block. This is the PC, job done. Not quite, there were a couple of little glitches along the way. The first is that I said that we saw the CETA A1 case at Computex 2019 and we weren't allowed to touch it because it had a sign saying, uh, keep your mitts off. And Silverstone pointed out completely correctly that the case in question was actually the Alter S1, which was uh, Computex, and it did indeed have a notice on saying don't touch, and we ignored that notice and we had great fun with it. Uh, the CETA A1 was at Computex, I, I saw it in a corner as I recall, so I, I got my cases confused and uh, hey ho. But it reminded me that while we were touring the Silverstone booth at Nangang at last Computex, we were photobombed by Steve Burke of Gamers Nexus, and I had a conversation with Steve on camera um, and I asked him a question which was actually to do with AMD Navi graphics, which at the time I hadn't yet launched. I'm gonna lie. I'm gonna say the question I asked Steve of Gamers Nexus was, Steve, does good CPU cooler testing actually exist? It's actually all a myth uh, created by the Illuminati. <laughs> You see, you can do anything you want with video, it's amazing. We have the PC, it looks the part. The object, as I say, was to show off parts such as magnitude, but I put some thermal figures in the uh, page when I, when I did the video. Any number of you pointed out that the uh, temperatures weren't great, and when I pulled the front panel off the case, the temperature for the CPU dropped hugely. So you concluded the airflow in this case is absolutely terrible. I'm personally not sure. The airflow is certainly complicated in this build. The air has to come towards the front of the case, it has to go around that front panel, it has to go through the filter that's inside the front panel, past the two 200mm fans that are inside the front of the chassis, and then it has to get through this radiator, and then I've blocked it off with this EK Quantum Kinetic Pump Reservoir Unit. So the airflow is not having a good time of it. I think it's just down to the build. However, a great many of you think it's actually down to the case itself, or combination of factors. And the truth of it is, I don't know. So I'm gonna do some science and find out the truth. The motherboard processor and memory in this PC are the same items I used when I tested the Zalman 17X and 20X air coolers, and also the Noctua D15, which is a comparison cooler. The approach I'm gonna take is similar in that I've got a bias profile, the voltage is locked down, which means that the power should be consistent. I'm using a power meter and so on and so forth. However, there is also a big difference between my testing method here and the one I used when I was doing those air coolers, which is that this is a case rather than the test bench, and I'm using ADA64 to stress both the CPU and the graphics card. So we've got a lot more heat in the case, and it's also crystal clear just by eye that the graphics card is cutting the case neatly in half at the moment, or it is while we've got the uh, reservoir at the front of the case. Things might change when I start moving things around. So I've made one significant change to my setup when I built this PC in the first instance, which is I swapped out the two VADA fans in the roof of the case for these Noctua NFF 12s. The reason for doing that is that the VADAs run up to 2200 RPM, the Noctuas run up to 1500 RPM. I don't want the PC to be massively loud, so I'm normalizing fan speed for a sensible level. In this instance, I'm starting with 1000 RPM. 1000 RPM as a percentage of 1500 of obviously is 66% and PWM has no trouble with that. However, 1000 RPM out of 2200 RPM, I might be in difficulty territory because PWM sometimes gets a bit funny at lower speeds and I don't want that, I wanna lock things down. I'm using an NZXT Grid Plus V2 fan controller to control the two 200 mil fans at the front of the case. The 200 millimeter fans are running at full speed, which should be 800 RPM. However, according to the CAM software, it's actually 750 RPM. And I've got the Noctuas in the roof of the case at 1000 RPM. I've rerun thermals just using A to 64 because that's the nastiest scenario I encountered with this PC in the first place, and temperatures have basically not changed from when I tested the other day to now, which means at least my setup is, well, A, similar to the one I used the other day, and B, it means there's nothing peculiar going on. So I've got a baseline. I know the PC runs hot with the front panel on, and obviously with the glass on. When I pull off the front panel, it gets considerably cooler. Also, I'm gonna stick 
with ADA 64 here. I could run Times by or Blender. They stress the CPU, but not as much as ADA 64. I want a straightforward, nasty test that is consistent. Also, I am keeping an eye on the graphics card temperature, my RTX 2080. That is not my prime focus here because the temperature of that card is okay and I'm sure it's gonna to continue to be okay. I'm looking at the CPU throughout this, my Ryzen 9 3900X, 12 cores, 24 threads, running at 4.1 gigahertz. I wanna see how the temperature of that CPU varies as I move things around inside the case. The first step is to remove the quantum kinetic pump reservoir unit from the front of the case. However, I obviously need a pump, so I'm gonna replace the pump reservoir with this DDC 3.2 from EK, which I've mounted on a bracket. Uh, so this is gonna go in there attached to the radiator. Obviously I have the quantum reservoir at the rear, so there is still a reservoir in the system. So I'm gonna ditch this unit and replace it with a pump at the front, uh, which will block a certain amount of airflow, but nothing like as much as the reservoir. To assist me in the process of replacing the pump reservoir with this pump, I'm gonna lose some of the hard tubing and install soft tubing instead. I forgot to mention this during my unboxing of the EK hardware. It's a nifty little Allen tool so you can remove blanking plugs from reservoirs and the like. It looks to me to be 3D printed. The idea is it won't take high torque. So if you really start to crank on the fastener, you'll simply break the tool. I like that a lot. With the DDC pump I'm gonna be installing, I'm not mad keen on the colors of the cabling. So I've added some black heat shrink to these parts as they're the bits that are gonna be on show. The first step to remove the EK Quantum Kinetic Pump Reservoir is to drain down the coolant and then to remove the hard tubing. Essentially, the entire PC is being dismantled, although the motherboard can remain in place and so can the power supply. The graphics card comes out, out with the 200 millimeter fans, and then we can release the radiator assembly, complete with the quantum kinetic pump reservoir, and replace it with the DDC pump. And then we reverse our steps. So the radiator assembly with the new pump goes into the case and is secured in position, the two 200 mil fans go back in place. The front of the case is replaced. And then we can install the 1013 fittings and the soft tube. Here's the revised loop. So we've got the pump feeding through flexi tube to the reservoir. Reservoir goes to the CPU block. CPU block goes to the rad. And then we've got this snake of fittings taking us back to the pump. Quick pressure test before we fill it. about 0.7 bar and we'll leave that just to check everything's good. The pressure's holding absolutely perfectly, so now we're safe to fill the loop with coolant. Power on. Just look at the difference at the front of the case. Now the kinetic's out of the way and we just have a pump mounted to the radiator. With the quantum kinetic removed and a DDC pump in the front of the case, by eye, the airflow is much improved. I'm ready for action. It's time for ADA 64. And the truth is the results are crushingly disappointing. I've spent some time removing this huge impediment to airflow. The system looks completely different and it performs exactly the same. I think my next step is gonna to be to remove the 200 mil fans in the front 
and replace them with three Noctua 120mm Chromaxes. Removing the pair of Silverstone 200mm fans is dead straightforward. The eight screws simply attach to the chassis. So remove the screws, the fans come out. Installing the three Noctua 120s with the setup I've got here is also straightforward. The screws pass through the fans, through the chassis and into the radiator. So the fans are holding the rad in place. I've now got five Noctuas installed. Same models, except the three at the front are Chromax, the two in the top are traditional brown. But in terms of spec and performance, they're identical. With all five Noctuas set at 1000 RPM, the temperatures didn't change one scrap. Exactly the same, barring a degree, as the pair of Silverstone 200s, which I have to say was disappointing. However, ramping the fan speed up to 1500 RPM that made a difference. That dropped temperatures by a healthy amount. And also the differential between having the front panel on and the front panel off came down significantly. Removing the graphics card from the chart and just looking at the CPU reinforces that point. It's crystal clear this case likes fan speed. So what am I to do? I think the next step is to replace the five Noctua 1500 RPMs with his EK Varda 2200 RPMs. I shan't be messing around with PWM functions. I'm gonna be setting these all at 100% to see just how this case performs with some proper airflow. Removing the five Noctua NF F12s is dead straightforward. And similarly, installing the five EK Varda Evos, also dead straightforward, especially as I ignored the RGB connections. With the system running, a few things became apparent quite quickly. The first is that the EK Varda Evos don't actually appear to run at 2200 RPM at full speed. They run slightly over 2000 RPM. So we're talking now the difference between 1500 RPM and 2000. The second point is that noise levels increased significantly with the 2000 or 2200 RPM EK Varda Evo fans. That's not welcome. I took my noise measurements 50 centimeters from the side panel of the case. So the difference in noise when the front panel was removed or in place is actually really small. And my reasoning for taking it from the side is that that's where I tend to hear my PC. When I'm sitting at my desk, my PC is down there. So in a sense, I should really take the levels like that. 50 centimeters like so. The main point here, however, is switching from the Noctuas to the EK Varda Evos made absolutely no difference to temperatures whatsoever. They didn't change one scrap. Up to this point, the fans I've been using have all been standard 25 mil units. So this is the rear fan that I removed, which is 25 mil thick. This 200 mil fan from the front is also 25 mil thick, obviously a lot larger, but the same thickness. Noctua NF12, 25 mil thick. EK Varda Evo, 25 mil thick. The time has come to roll out the big guns. One final throw of the dice. A month or two ago, EK launched the Meltimi fan, which is 37 and a half mil in thickness. You can see the difference. This, however, is a furious Meltimi, which is rated up to 3,500 RPM. So it's 50% thicker than a conventional fan and rotates one heck of a lot faster. To switch the fans around, we first remove all the panels. Then we uninstall the five EK Varda Evos. In the front, we can install one of the EK Furious Meltimis in the middle position because the inside of the front panel is curved, so there's only space for one thick fan. At the top and bottom, we install a Noctua Chromax NF F12. In the roof of the case, we have two of the EK Furious Meltimis. And then we're ready to turn the PC on. We're gonna have the three Meltimis running at full speed, 3,500 RPM, and the two Noctua Chromaxes running at 1,500 RPM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Holy mackerel, the furious Meltimis are noisy running at 3,500 RPM. I cannot begin to think of any application where these fans running at full speed in a PC would make any sense whatsoever. But balanced against that, Clearly, I have gone to the extremes. I've absolutely pushed the limits. In case it's not crystal clear, the reason the Furious Meltimi has this red 
power cable is that if you stick your fingers in the rotating fan blade, you may well regret that experience. I imagine you could do yourself some serious damage. Just look at our noise meter chart and see the increase in sound levels from having three of these Meltimis in the case, along with two of the Noctuas. Absolutely ear splitting. Balanced against that, the performance is impressive. We drag temperatures down by a significant amount and more to the point, the delta between having the front panel on and the front panel removed is now absolutely tiny. If you pack this case with fans and crank up the fan speed, it can shift air, but quite clearly we're fighting against a restriction. That is obvious. We've reached the end of our experiment. Our Ryzen 9 3900X sitting at a steady 4.1 gigahertz, drawing a steady 150 watts can be kept under control but you have to work at it. The thing that surprised me most is that removing the quantum kinetic pump reservoir from the front of the case in the first instance made no difference. With the stock 200 mil fans, which clearly rotate slowly, generate very little pressure, the pump reservoir in the front of the case was not an issue. Uh, so when the original comment said that case clearly doesn't flow air and I said, nope, it's down to the pump reservoir, it looks like I was wrong. So switching to the DDC in and of itself made no difference. Substituting the two 200 mil fans for three Noctua F12s at 1000 RPM made no difference. Essentially those packages are the same. Cranking the Noctuas up to 1500 RPM, that made a difference. Another thing that surprised me was that when I swapped out the three Noctuas for the three EK Vardas and went up further on fan speed from 1500 RPM to 2200 RPM, that made no difference. Now, you're adding RGB to the equation if you want it, but in terms of performance, 1500 RPM of Noctua against 2200 RPM of EK. I honestly thought I'd see a difference, and I didn't. I was surprised. And then we went the whole hog with these three monster fans, two in the roof, one in the center at the front, along with two of the Noctuas, and the airflow is there. The cooling isn't bad. The noise levels are just absurd. The other thing that jumps off the page from our testing data is that when you shut your high-end PC hardware in a relatively compact case with a convoluted front intake, yup, you have to work hard at the cooling to avoid a problem. If you like this video, hit the bell button, subscribe, keep an eye on the channel. We post regular new videos. Head over to kitguru.net to read full length reviews with photos and all sorts of good stuff, including tech news. I'm Neil Wood of Kit Guru. This is an awful lot of fans from Noctua, EK and Silverstone.